So this is today. Today is yesterday and tomorrow is also today. You traveled through time to the present. Yes. Yeah, I don't think you get how time travel works. It's like we're stuck. You know, like a like a needle on a scratch record. I wake up every day right here, right in Punxsutawney, and it's always February 2nd. It's one of those infinite time loop situations you might have heard about. It's a thing where the same day keeps happening. Time. in a damn time loop or something? Ah! Interior. TV studio. Morning. As the credits end, we enter the studio of the Channel 9 Action News. From the look of it, a typical big city local news operation. A logo on the wall identifies this station as WPGH, Pittsburgh. The news has just ended and some of the personnel are still lingering in the studio. Gil Holly, executive producer of the Action News, comes out on the floor. Holly. Has anybody seen Phil? A technician points to the news desk. We can see a pair of legs sticking out from behind it. Holly looks back there and finds Phil Connors, the action news weatherman, asleep on the floor. We're on page two of the third revision of the script. This is Groundhog Day Project Minute by Minute, obviously. You press play. You should know that. This is page two, meaning we've already got the bit with the shot of groundhogs in their lair and the camera flying over the city. And we've seen Phil in front of the chroma key, but in this version of the script, we don't hear him when he's doing that part. It's uh, under the credits and the music. Holly. Phil. Hey, Phil, wake up. Phil. Groans. Never mix ouzo and schnapps. First of all, you have to take a cab. And second of all... He falls back asleep. Holly. Phil. Phil, do you mind? I'm trying to meditate. I'm in a trance, coming up with my five o'clock forecast. Holly. Yeah? What did you come up with so far? Phil yawns and slowly gets to his feet. He's in his mid-thirties, smart, rugged-looking, perhaps a little too full of himself, but clearly a guy with a lot of personality. Phil. So far I got dark tonight. Gradually turning to light in the morning, except for those military personnel stationed above the Arctic Circle. Holly, what about that blizzard? Phil points to a chart which is headed, Phil's forecast. (laughs) Okay, that's funny. You couldn't hear that, but it is Phil's forecast, P-H-I-L apostrophe S, P-H-O-R-E-C-A-S-T. With a cute caricature of himself drawn next to the title. Phil, forget the blizzard. All that moisture coming up from the Gulf is going to miss us completely and paralyze Harrisburg. Holly, with authority. Good, because you're going up to Punxsutawney to cover the Groundhog story tomorrow morning, and I want you back here in time to do the five. Wait, is he informing him the day before that he's going? I feel like Phil would have to know that well ahead of time, and it would be a scheduled thing. I mean, it is a scheduled thing. Phil, Jesus, Gil, give me a break, will you? I covered that goddamn groundhog last year, and what was that accent? (laughs) Oh, man. Sorry. I have a headache, and I was like, I'm just reading part of the script. It'll be fine. I covered the goddamn groundhog last year and the year before that. Holly. And you do it next year and the year after, too. When I worked in San Diego, I covered the swallows coming back to Capistrano for ten years in a row. Now, you may notice... I'll point it out now in case uh, at the obvious one. A lot of the dialogue in this scene does end up in other parts of the movie for the final revision. I'll have to talk about the final revision next week. We'll eventually get to minute three. Whatever. It's my show. Get your own show if you want different. <laughs> like Sean German and uh, Dave Palace with Groundhog Minute. Great show. I was on it a uh, stretch of three episodes during the diner scene. Yeah. And then I was there for the finale. And that shows kind of the reason I got into podcasting. (laughs) Ha ha. Blame shown. Anyway, where was I? Back to Capistrano for ten years in a row. Okay. Phil, you should have killed the guy who made you do that. Holly, I wanted to do it. Phil, then you should have killed yourself. 
I'm not going to get stuck with the ground dog for the rest of my life. Oh my god, the irony. Like, literally, because, you know, he dies multiple times. <laughs> Sorry, I'm mildly amused by Groundhog Day today. <sighs> oh, Holly's getting a read on. Holly. It's a cute story. He comes out, he looks around, he wrinkles up his little nose, he sniffs around, he sees a shadow, he doesn't see a shadow. It's nice. People like it. Oh, that's like almost word for word. I imagine Holly is a little more gruff than Rita, though. It's a cute story. He comes out. He looks around. He wrinkles up his little nose. He sniffs around. He sees his shadow. He doesn't see his shadow. It's nice. People like it. Phil. Many people are morons. Holly. Just do it. Phil. I will do it because it amuses me. Right? See, Phil gets it. He doesn't need to be changed. (laughs) Obviously, that's not true. Holly. Good boy, Phil. Holly looks across the studio and sees Rita Hansen enter, a very attractive segment producer in her late twenties. He calls her over. Holly. Rita, could you come here for a second? I've got a little job for you. Rita is relatively new to the station, but very competent, personable, humorous, self-assured, and very pretty. In short, a genuine princess. Though Phil is too self-absorbed at this point to realize it. Phil, teasing. You can't send Rita out on a story like this. She's just a cub, a pup, still wet behind the ears. Look at her. Her ears are sopping wet. This needs a Woodward or a Bernstein. It's a big story. People need to know. Rita, intrigued. What's the story? Phil, to Holly. Please, no. Holly, the Punxsutawney Groundhog Festival. Oh, I forgot about this version of Rita. She is so full of herself. Okay. Rita. Sorry, Gil, I'm working on the nurses' strike. Phil, what did I tell you? Holly, you can do the nurses when you get back. I think this is the first time reading this that I got this joke. Oh my god. Because Holly says, you can do the nurses when you get back. Phil, I'll help you. (laughs) He does not mean helping with that story. Oh my god. Oh. Holly, just take the squeaky wheel here up to Punxsutawney and get him back in one piece, okay? Rita, yeah, okay. Holly exits, leaving Phil and Rita alone in the studio. She knows Phil mainly by his reputation, and it isn't good. Still, she finds him appealing in an odd way. Who did this? This draft is credited to Ramus and Rubin, and by the third revision, they do have input from Bill Murray. Right? Yeah. Why are they putting so much in the frickin'... I was going to say slugline, but this isn't slugline. I'm forgetting labels on screenplays. The, The... Description. Shit. Whatever it's called. You think, since I'm currently working on a screenplay, I'd have an idea. Anyway. Phil. Pleasantly. You know, this could be extremely interesting. Rita. I've never done a weather story before. What's Punxsutawney like? Phil. Gee. It's an enchanted place. A magical world. It's the Constantinople of the entire western Appalachian Susquehanna drainage. Rita. Do you always joke? Phil. No. About 70 to 80% of the time. Inside, I'm a very shy and sensitive person, so I kid. Rita, a lot of people around here think you're not very sincere. Phil, well, I hope I've convinced you. Rita, I'll line up a crew and transportation. We can all go up in the van together. Phil, I think I'll take my own car. I'm not that fond of my... (laughs) Not that fond? (laughs) Fond. Sorry, losing it again. Where was I? Oh, I think I'll take my own car. I'm not that fond of my fellow man. Rita. Exciting. (laughs) And I can't read. (laughs) Shit. Rita. Exiting. Nice attitude. Phil. Nice face. Calls after her. Why don't you ride up with me? Rita. No thanks. Okay. Now's the important part. Really deserves its own episode. And I'm sure she'll come up again. Stephanie DeCastro. An attractive, dark-eyed, dark-haired correspondent. Glares at Phil from across the studio. Interior. Phil's office. Later. Phil is in his cluttered cubicle, talking on a headset phone while he reviews cassettes of his groundhog spots from the past two years on a small monitor. See, that actually would be funny if we see him reviewing the spots from the previous year and then he uses like the exact same language and same jokes. That would be interesting. But we don't get that. Wow, that sounded negative. 
That's right, I hate this film. No, that's, I don't. Where was I? Two years on a small monitor. As he talks, he stuffs a number of personal items in an overnight bag, all the time watching himself on the TV monitor. Phil, on the phone. They don't really think of me as a weatherman around here. More of a personality, but with the credibility of a first-class broadcast journalist. Once you look at my tape, I think you'll see what they mean. So he's trying to get another job, obviously. It's that major network who's interested in him. The Home Shopping Network. Come on, people. Get in here with the punchline. Stephanie enters and stands in the doorway, looking at Phil for a long moment. There's something vaguely off-center about this woman. Not quite fatal attraction, but still a little scary. That's racist. <laughs> Stephanie, bitterly. I just want to know one thing. Did I do something wrong, or are you just tired of me, or what? I have to know. Phil sighs. Phil, on the phone. Dan, can I call you back? I've just been handed something very hot, about to break. I better get on it. He picks up some papers and rustles them for effect. Okay, thanks. He takes off the headset, gets up, and closes the door for privacy. Phil, kindly. You didn't do anything wrong, Stephanie, and I'm not tired of you. It's just that I don't have time for a real relationship right now. I told you that the first time we went out. Stephanie, getting close. Everybody says that at the beginning of a relationship. Phil, gently pushing her away. <laughs> That's a good direction for this. <laughs> I'm different. I really meant it. Things are really starting to move for me now. I'm not going to be doing the weather for the rest of my life. I was just talking to the CBS guy about a network job. I want that. This is just the beginning for me. I can't waste any more time. Stephanie, are you saying our relationship was a waste of time? Phil, our relationship? We went out a total of four times, and only twice did anything happen. We had fun. Fun. But fun is not commitment. Chokes himself for emphasis. Stephanie, closing in again. Just give it time. We're extremely compatible. There may even be some past lives involvement here. Phil, see, so we've already done this. Let's move on. Next case. Stephanie, you know what's wrong with you, Phil? You're selfish. You don't have time for anyone but yourself. Phil, exactly. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You don't want to be with me. You can do better. Look, Stephanie, if I ever said or did anything to mislead you, I'm sorry for that. But right now, I have to do this groundhog thing, and I don't have a handle on it yet. Stephanie, Phil, handle this. She gives him the finger and exits. Phil calls after her. I know you're angry, Stephanie, and I respect that. Cut to exterior, a highway, afternoon. A van marked Channel 9 Action News speeds along a two-lane highway through the winter landscape of west-central Pennsylvania. Mounted atop the van is a microwave transmitter. Rita is riding up front with Larry, the union cameraman, and Techie. We'll come back to Stephanie next week, and then we'll get to minute three the week after, I suppose. But we'll continue this. Phil is following close behind the van in a new Lexus coupe. His car has a bumper sticker that reads, Weatherman, like it sunny and moist. Ew? Ew. Wait, ew? What? Sunny and moist? I feel like there's a better pun there. If you're listening to this, like and review the show on your various podcatchers, and give us some ideas for Weatherman puns that are sleazy and disgusting. <laughs> Actually, I think this one gets that, but I think there could be a better one. Phil, voiceover, on his car phone, disguising his voice. Hello, is this the Channel 9 news van? Can I please speak with Rita? Interior, the van, same time. Larry hands Rita the cellular phone. Larry, it's for you. Rita looks surprised, but takes the call. Rita, hello? Interior, the Lexus, continuous. Phil talks to Rita in a really strange, funny voice. I'm trying to imagine. I think I'm just going to talk. Phil, is this Rita? You don't know me, but I'm the guy right behind you in the red Bronco. I watch the Channel 9 News all the time, and I was wondering what Phil Connors is like. He's always been kind of a hero to me. Rita looks out the back window and sees Phil following close behind. Ooh, the back window. Ooh, that's so sad. Production problem. Because the actual van wouldn't have a back window they can look out because there's equipment there. That's okay. Minor. And big problem thing. Rita. Great. Prank phone calls, Phil. Phil, in his real voice. Don't hang up. 
This is as much fun as you're going to have on this trip. Rita. Goodbye, Phil. She hangs up. Cut to a sign. Welcome to Punxsutawney, the original weather capital of the world since 1887. Depicted on the sign is a large cartoon groundhog wearing a top hat and clutching an umbrella under his arm. The mini convoy passes some fast food places on the outskirts of town. Cut to exterior, Main Street, Punxsutawney, later. The van drives along a small town, Main Drag. There are cartoon groundhogs everywhere you look, and the whole town has been gaily festooned. Good phrasing. With banners and bunting. That Actually, the whole sentence is good. Exterior, motel, later. The van pulls into the parking lot at a quality inn. The announcement billboard in front of the motel reads, Groundhog Day Breakfast Special, February 2nd, All You Can Eat, five ninety nine. Parking area is already crowded with cars, including a number of other news vans. The Lexus pulls in behind the van, and everybody gets out. Phil takes one look at the motel and shakes his head. Phil calls out, Rita, I can't stay here, etc. And we're at them in front of the Punxsutawney Hotel. Punxsutawney Hotel? That's not what it's called. Right? <laughs> wow. Okay, I'm, I hope I leave that audio in right there, because I got lost for a second. Um, What's it called? It's the Punks, It's the Woodstock Opera House, pretending to be the something hotel. The bar inside is actually at the... Well, we'll talk about it when we get to those scenes, but the bar inside is at the courthouse. It's actually in an old jail. Amusingly, the jail cell that Phil is in is kind of in the same room as the bar, and the interior dance area is at the an Elks Lodge or a Moose Lodge? Shoot, I've been there a couple blocks away. It's close to the bowling alley, actually. Moose Lodge, I think it is. Talk more about that. Pennsylvania Hotel. Oh, thank you. That was going to bother me all day. Anyway, next week a little bit more on Stephanie DeCastro. Weirdly, I believe in this revision, this is all we get of her. It was that scene. We don't come back to her. Let me double check. The insert scene is only only exists in Ruben's book, How to Write Groundhog Day. They never filmed it, never intended to. Talk more about that next time. First, I play the game by the rules from one to ten. Then you took me around. Through time. What is wrong in the end, which never comes? Or which comes again and again? Lap, lap, lapping. Like waves. Since the Big Bang set everything in motion, everything that happens in this universe has to be the way it is. Man, are you hungry? I haven't eaten since later this afternoon. Particles unfolding the way they're destined to. How do you sleep at night? You've never seen Groundhog Day? Yeah, you know, Groundhog Day is not a documentary.